Thank you, Rasikas, for your overwhelming response. All your comments and responses have really made me so excited to come back here and talk to you and share some nice moments with you talking about music and great music masters. So our music is an oral tradition. As they say in Tamil, it is Vare Yadi Vare, Guru Sishya, from Guru to Sishya, like that it keeps going from one generation to the other, flowing like a river. So I wanted to give you a glimpse of how it was for me in my childhood to learn at the feet of my Guru Sangeeta Kalanidhi, Srimati, T. Brinda. It was another world, another mindset, another value system that uh, she uh, belonged to and put a lot of weight on certain things that were quite, uh, you know, today we would find it quite alien to, uh, you know, think like that. So, as you know, I grew up in Bombay in a very small flat, as we call the Bombay apartments. And my parents were both very fond of music and they approached Brindama and she just wrote, my father just wrote to her saying that we are all, you know, a whole band of uh, devotees of your music. Would you like to come to Bombay and uh, spend some time here? And uh, it was surprising she agreed to do so and she came and stayed for three months during the summer holidays at our little humble place. And uh, when she was teaching music, I remember my mother telling me, just keep hovering around the place. Even if you go to play with your friends in the evening, make sure you're playing in the building compound. Don't go away to another building. Because if Brinda Ma suddenly decides uh, to call you and ask you to sing something, I want you to be at hand. At the stroke of one uh, little, you know, shout from me, Aruna, I'll call you and you have to come scampering up and sing uh, with Brindama. So I remember always, you know, somewhere around my house, I used to be there within your shot of my mother. And then senior singers would come and learn from Brindama. Actually, I was the odd person out, you know, I was this little minion running around, but she really came there to teach some very senior musicians. So they would all come at 11 in the morning, the class would start and uh, it would be a long affair. One day I remember a new student came and with her she brought a full scrap paper and pen and very studiously she put it in front of her. She wanted to note down everything that Brindama was going to say. And Brindama wouldn't talk of starting the class. She just kept looking here and there, shifting around, but she didn't start the class. Then she looked at that full scrap paper and then without lifting her head, she looked up at the student. You know how it is when somebody disapproves of you and immediately everybody knew something is not quite all right. And Brindama quietly told that student, uh, and the paper, do you need that piece of paper? Why don't you just go put it away, come back? What I want you to do is focus, concentrate, put all your senses into the music, listen to me, see me, perceive what I am saying, feel everything that I am doing with all your senses and just repeat what I am singing and listen carefully with your ears. I will sing as many times as you want. And she would do that. She would teach for three hours at a stretch. And she managed to teach a whole complex kriti, like Kaddanavariki or Yavarimata. She would teach it to us in one day. And the next day, she would expect me, particularly because I was the kid around, you know, she would tell me, Ah, paadu, and the kriti paadu panitiya, nanna paadi paathitiya, you have to sing it for me. So the next day I would sing it. Of course, the class would also sing it. Then by the third morning, she would expect me to notate it and put it in front of her. And notation means every, every aksharam, every little pause or meter, metric, uh, you know, count of time has to be notated and the whole kriti has to be placed in front of her in notation. 
she would look at it and then she would quietly approve and then it would be circulated to the class. So this was a very interesting way of teaching. First, it is oral. It is completely through your mind and your senses that you imbibe the music. Then you digest it, you learn it and then you bring it out after analyzing and intellectually understanding it and actually writing it. You bring it out and put it on a piece of paper. So this kind of reverse passage of the knowledge, not this way, but that way, really helped to completely internalize the material. So today, if you ask me at any time of day or night and tell me, please sing this particular piece that Brindama taught you, I would be able to do it. That is the way she indelibly etched it in my muscle memory and in my mind memory. So that was an amazing experience, friends. So I'm sure this anecdote would and um, you know enthuse you to pursue music in your own way either as a listener or, or as a practitioner and i will very soon see you the next time